Hi, good to see you again. I'm Graham Martin, I'm the recruitment guy from orchardjobs.com. Today I want to talk about the kind of things that employers are really looking for when they hire somebody. We're not going to be talking about interview tips as such, but just the kind of things that employers are thinking about when they've got somebody in front of them, what kind of things will make them make a decision about whether to hire you or not to hire you. But before we do that, we've had lots of hits on the website and lots of emails coming through about my, uh, my tearing up of the CVs. You remember that a couple of weeks ago? Um, and I'm not going to apologise. I still think that it's really, really important that we get the opening paragraph, the, the profile, your, your advert, if you like, just right. There's a lot of information out there. It, it's on the internet, there's books, there's, there's so much information out there. There's no excuse for you not to have a really good opening statement. And that can make the difference. Whether it's an employer or a recruiter, that opening statement will really either make or break whether they turn the page or not. So please, do your homework, nail it, get it right. Anyway, today, I was to say, I'm gonna be talking about what employers are really looking for. Now, if you've already got to the stage of interview, I'm gonna make the assumption that your, your qualifications are acceptable. They may be borderline, but they may be acceptable. And this is the fact, is that in my experience for nearly 25 years of, of talking to companies, that apart from specific areas where you might need a, an accountancy qualification or a medical degree, or maybe you're going into a job as a surveyor or an architect, for the most part, companies are interested less in your qualifications and more in terms of what you've done, what they think you can bring to the company, and also the way you behave and, and common sense and communication. So when we think about communication, again, the opening statement, so many times people put, they can communicate at all levels. And, and really, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, how many people can talk to people that may be tramps all the way to royalty and nobility? I don't think that's the case. I think most of us communicate at a, a social level pretty much in the middle. So let's not go on about that. But let's make sure that in the interview we can evidence that we have got good communication skills and that we speak in a fairly measured way and that we listen. Remember we've got two ears and one mouth so let's use them in that ratio. Also companies are looking for people that share their values. Irrespective of age group or what the role is, do you get it? Do you understand about being committed to a business? Can you talk about a way that maybe you've gone the extra mile before? So often when I look at uh, job specifications, the, the companies talk about, we want a team player. Well, in many roles, yes, we do need team players. And if that's the case, talk about where you've been a team player. Maybe the job you've had hasn't given you the opportunity to shine in that situation, but maybe you've been involved in the scouts, the guides, or a football team, or maybe music, or Duke of Edinburgh, or, or you've done something in your community. Make sure you can talk about that. Very rarely do companies want prima donnas, except occasionally, and this is interesting, when it comes to sales recruitment, companies do want superstars. They want people that are slightly selfish, if you like, that can go out there and drive the business and not really worry about the other people that they're trying to work with, their colleagues in other territories. Often sales directors are looking for guys and girls that are just gonna be focused on, on their patch, their territory, and if that's the case, they need to know you're driven, and it's okay to be slightly precious, if you like, and, and talk about your achievements. But for most other jobs, they're interested in what you can bring to the party. They also want to know if you're motivated, and they'll want to know evidence of that. Now, coming back to this issue about qualifications, let's just park the academic side and start talking about whether you've got a qualification, a GNVQ, something which can relate to what you can do in the workplace. Companies increasingly are saying to us in recruitment, have they got Word, have they got Excel, Access, what's their typing like, what's their data entry speed and accuracy like, and guess what, can they spell? Can they add up? And if these are areas that you're not very strong on, don't worry too much, but before you actually start thinking about getting a new job, test yourself, get your friends or your family to test you, Put yourself through it. Would you hire you? If the answer's question mark, 
then guess what? Do some work on yourself. Invest in yourself. You know, get a dictionary, get some spelling tests, do yourself some, some maths tests, test yourself, build your skill set. And if it's Word and Excel, do an evening course or, or maybe go to college at uh, a weekend just to raise your standard. Because increasingly, with students coming out of, of college and university, and maybe people being made redundant, employers do have a choice. And they will go for the person that they think can add the best value to the business. They're also looking for people that can say, with, with strong evidence, I can go the extra mile. So you need to be talking about the way where you have done things outside of 9 to 5, 5.30, what your normal working hours are, to prove that you can be somebody that can make a real difference to the business. Because people that own businesses, people like me, are always thinking about who's the future manager? Who's the future director? Who am I going to pass the baton on to? So really, they're looking for people like them. Yeah, a bit younger with maybe a bit more hair, but nonetheless, they're looking for people that can fit in and share their values. So I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into what employers are really looking for. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the kind of questions that you can ask the employer. Later on, we're going to be talking about the questions that they might ask you, but really, I want you to start thinking about the kind of questions that you can ask an employer, because remember, an interview is a two-way street. It's not just a one-way dialogue. So that's it from now. I'm Graham Martin. I'm the recruitment guy from orchardjobs.com. Say goodbye.